All right, all right. Good evening, good evening, good evening all. Good evening. Let me find my number one camera. Let me find the number one camera. Welcome to Bethel Cathedral. This is a special, special edition of our midweek refresher. Our conversation is a little bit different today. Today we are talking about millennials, marriage, and ministry. And we have some of the most saved couples that Indianapolis has to offer on tonight. But before we get started, let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our God, our Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you, God. We love you for this day that you have made. We thank you, God, for health and strength. We thank you, God, for a mind to be in this place. Now, God, we pray that you allow your Holy Spirit to be with us, God, as we converse together, as we lift you up, God, as we uh, continue to grow together in ministry and in marriage. We thank you, God for the couples that are represented tonight and god for those that are joining us virtually we pray now god that your holy spirit will lead us and god we will follow it is in jesus name that we pray and the people of god say amen amen, amen and amen uh, well my brothers and sisters welcome welcome please 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 go ahead and share uh this broadcast with somebody go ahead and share this broadcast uh, we should be live on the bethel youtube page we should be live on Facebook. We should be live on the Abundant Faith page. Amen. Amen. So if you're watching us, go ahead and join us. We believe that God has something great on tonight. I am not moderating. I'm just merely going to try to answer some questions. Amen. And keep my marriage together tonight. Amen. We're not going to tell all the business, but we're going to tell some of the business. So won't you help me to celebrate uh, and welcome. Amen. I'm going to do the introduction and then we're going to turn it over to our moderators. Amen. Uh, and they are going to help us in the conversation. I hope y'all pray together. Amen. And I hope y'all worship together, couples. Amen. Because we're about to have a more, a most open, transparent moment. Amen. Uh, let me first welcome the couple from Emmanuel Free Will Baptist Church, uh, Pastor Jay Riley and First Lady Jasmine Riley. Come on and celebrate them. Amen. And the couple, the first family from Abundant Faith Community Church, Pastor Jordan Bartlett and Lakia Bartlett. Amen. Amen. And then from Bethel Church, our very own Minister Carlos Dyer and Sister Amber Dyer. Amen. Amen. And they are the newest couple uh, here. Amen. Uh, but they are our moderators for tonight. And let me just get this right and introduce the first lady of Bethel Church. Uh, in the person of Dr. Carla Perkins. You want to say something now? No, she don't want to say anything. Amen. This is going to be real interesting tonight. So let me turn it over to, to, to Carlos and Amber. They're going to moderate us tonight uh, in this. Let's make sure that everything is up on Facebook and that folks can join us uh, and everything is good. Uh, Carlos and Amber, it's in your hands. So everybody, good evening. <laughs> so uh, as Dr. Perkins has already stated, we are here to talk about ministry, millennials, and marriage. So as we get into it, we uh, would like you guys to gain an interesting perspective because one of the things that um, I think is understated is marriage isn't hard and then you have ministry on top of that. So we're going to dive into that. And why is marriage hard? Could it be easier? We're just going to answer some of these questions that I know that you guys have. So, as we jump in, I just want to start off with a really, really, really basic question. How did each one of you guys meet? Right at the end. We'll start at the end. <laughs> we met um, actually through my best friend in high school. He was not in high school, but we were in high school. And he would come and pick my best friend up from school. And I was like, had the biggest crush on him until I turned around 18. And then he was like, oh, tell Jasmine I said, what's up? And then after that, we started dating. And we have been married ever since. So 23, 24 years. So we met through a mutual friend as well. Um, it's actually my neighbor from back home and um, one of Carlos's best friends from college. And we met at his house and got to know each other. And here we are 23 years later. 
You didn't tell the people that you saw me and say, oh, I have to have him. That's the Jamaican I need in my life. <laughs> Stick to the plan. Right. This is actually quite funny because he says that I add my own flavor to this. But so since he gave me the mic, I get to add my own flavor. So I was out. Um, we met. I was out celebrating my birthday. He was with someone I went to college with, a mutual friend. He introduced us. Um, he asked for my number 10 times. That's my flavor. <laughs> no, he... <laughs> I'm not... So, so we exchanged numbers and um, we actually got married a year to the date that we met later. And we've been married for 10 years. I like it. I like it. Taking notes already. <laughs> the first lady didn't tell y'all. This is before she was the first lady. We actually met in a nightclub. There you go. So when she said out celebrating. Why are you putting the business in the when elements? She said out celebrating. <laughs> she was celebrating, celebrating. You understand me? All right. I tell you. Had to keep I'm an eye. I'm telling you. Had to keep an I'm eye on you guys this evening. I'm telling. So. The next question, um, and anyone, any of the couples can answer this. How do you go about resolving conflict with your spouse? Oh, we're just going to jump right in. Yeah. yeah. We, let's we get to it. Let's get to it. We didn't warm up at all. <laughs> so, so uh, First Lady and I have been married now for 21 years. Um, so a couple things have worked in our favor, but also worked against us. One, I don't have a long memory. So I don't remember what we're fighting about like an hour later. Um, and, and, and usually uh, when there's a conflict, um, I'm usually the victim uh, in the conflict. <laughs> uh, and so uh, there's always a lot of talking going on in my house. Um, and if you all know me, when I get home, I don't like to talk a whole lot. Um, and so usually when there's a conflict, um, there's not a, a blow up. We don't, we don't tend to have blow up. We try to keep it away from the kids. So we try to resolve stuff uh, in the bedroom. We try our very best not to go to bed angry, uh, even though we have gone to bed angry a couple of times, um, but we try to, to resolve the issue. Usually uh, we, we allow time to resolve the issue. So, our, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, no, no. go ahead, go ahead, yeah. N no, um, yes, so it's a lot of communication, but it doesn't always happen only in that one moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to have multiple conversations about the same thing, and I think that we have gotten better over time at giving each other the space and opportunity to have those multiple conversations. So real quick, what does that look like? How would that be modeled? What, the multiple conversations? Well, just having healthy conversations. Um, well, I think we tried to talk through most of the conflicts that we have. We try. Usually, I don't want to talk. <laughs> um, because I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I don't stay angry very long. Uh, which is helpful, but sometimes it's not. Um, uh, I will ask the question, uh, is this worth fighting over? I will say, hun, are we really fighting over this? And what will be your answer? Yes. <laughs> 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 and then we'll say, okay, I guess we need to talk this through. So that's usually, usually how the conflict goes. Anybody else? Um, so we are very different in this, in this um, space. Um, I am a, um, okay, this is the problem. We've identified the problem. We've addressed the problem. Now let's move past the problem. Um, and she is a, I'm not ready to move past the problem yet. Um, we, we need to talk about this some more. Um, and, and similar uh, to Pastor Perkins, um, I have found that when I get home, I have reached my word limitation. 
Um, and so I have to search for words. Um, and, and that takes a lot because I'm just like, I've been talking all day. Like, can we just be still? Um, but, but as well, um, Jasmine is, has helped me. She has helped me um, to understand to not go to bed angry. Um, Lord Jesus, because she will keep us awake <laughs> until we work through whatever the situation is. Um, I, I mean, when I say keep us awake, I can fall asleep and she's rolling over. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, um, and, and we have, <laughs> we've grown in that area. Um, and so now, even though my words are limited at home, I have learned um, how to communicate more effectively um, during those trying times. And, and just let me add that I found the secret sauce to end every argument. And, and that is a good hug. Man, I, I, I have found that if you have a good hug. <laughs> get some husbands hurt. Does that work for y'all? Uh, Let's go get some Jordan. husbands hurt. <laughs> Don't you do it. Yeah, that's not the sauce. That's not the. That's the sauce in their home. Too. Yeah, I, listen, yeah, listen. No, a gonna, good hug, man. You, you, you not. gotta try it. You gotta we try do. it. You gotta. <laughs> no, we're not gonna do that. That's that's what we're not gonna do. Um, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. Um, I think I think f- f- for us, the best thing because, like any other couple, we have different personalities and styles when it comes to conflict. I think for us, what I have found to be best is for me to essentially just let my wife get out everything all at one time. Because number one, when she's upset, regardless of how logical I am, she's not hearing anything other than whatever she's saying. So the best thing to do is just to let her get everything out even if it brings up something from seven years ago yes, Lord. Just, just get it all out um and then after she has you know exhausted all of that uh and my, my signal normally is she's just not gonna say anything and then i know that she's ready for me to uh ready for me to talk so from then we're, we're typically able to have um, some dialogue, but but I am not. Uh, I'm I'm typically not a let's let's handle this right now. Like I, all the stuff you just said, I need a moment to even process everything you just said. But she wants to deal with it all like right now. Um, so I find that letting her vent things out uh, not only is beneficial to her, but it also <laughs> buys me some time to be able to process what she's saying. So, so even in the whole idea of not going to be angry, um, that used to be a very literal thing for us. Um, and now that has translated more to, even if we go to bed a few nights, not letting the issue just dissolve. So even if we go to bed angry a few nights, we still come back and address what the issue is, right? So. But because we have such different personalities and styles, sometimes the best thing for both of us is to take a night and like, let's talk about this in the the morning. Um, So that's. But but do you have to resolve every issue? Because sometimes I just need to go to sleep. So so for us, for us, (laughs) for for, for us, I'll say this. Let me say this. I don't know if the question is, do you have to resolve every issue or if everything really is an issue? Amen. So, so, so I think, (laughs) I I think, I think what's, (laughs) I think what's (laughs) important in marriage is to understand that sometimes a big part of marriage is just making what's important to your spouse important to you. So like, I really don't care about this, but since it's so important to you, let's, let's go ahead and deal with it. Amen. Um, but I, I think that, that <laughs> I think that that works heavily both ways, right? Because like there's some things that she probably would be like, that, um, "Why is that a big deal?" And I'm like, "Because because it is." And the fact that I normally don't complain and I normally don't say much, the fact that I'm saying something now 
you should know how big of a deal this really is. So question, how do you communicate without being disrespectful? And what I mean by that is, okay, you've gotten into it. Of course, your feelings are involved. They might have gotten hurt. You're mad. You're upset. But at the end of the day, that's still your spouse. So you still got to be respectful with it. How do you maintain that and make sure you don't hit below the belt and say some stuff that you can't take back? Absolutely. And so that's what I have learned throughout our marriage. So I did used to keep us up all night. We're going we're gonna to come to some type of resolution. But what I have learned, and he actually has called me out about it, I have, it's not that I'm shutting down, but I am being very quiet because I want to make sure that what comes out of my mouth is respectful. And so I have just learned to be quiet for the moment until that I can come back to him in a respectful manner. Um, and so he, he was really put off at first, like, what is wrong with you? Why are you not speaking? And I'm like, because I want to make sure that the way that I'm saying it to you is communicated effectively. And you are not just at death's ear, right? Because we have, we would just shut down if someone's speaking to us in a way that is not receptive. So I have learned to shut my mouth, which is very difficult for me, but it has worked out for the better of our marriage. <laughs> also, one thing that, uh, that Jordan said, learning that what's important to somebody else matters is huge because that was an issue I had. I was like, it's not that deep. Like, for real? Like, this is really what, I mean, okay. <laughs> um, and But I've learned that those things matter, right? Um, because the way that I would respond with, is it really that serious? Is hurtful um, because that's diminishing um, her feelings um, rather than acknowledging that I potentially did something wrong. It doesn't happen that often, but potentially I've done something wrong um, that has hurt her feelings. Um, and I need to address that and accept the fact that um, this is major. Right. Um, so. Uh, for me, the question you asked about how do we not uh, get disrespectful when we're angry? Um, for me, is because I used to be this way too. So everything I'm saying is not that I've always been this way, but it's a maturity thing, like checking your emotions, making sure your emotions are in, intact and being more mature about it and staying away from these always and never statements. Um, so for <laughs> when I used to get upset and sometimes I still do and I have to catch myself, it's like, you always do this. You never do this. And, and I know what, I know what can hurt his feelings. And if I'm hurt, I want to hurt his feelings because hurt people hurt people. So staying away from that, like, am I just trying to get him right now or is it really going to help with the situation? So to me, it's a maturity thing, like checking yourself, taking some time back, like, like uh, she said, and knowing what to say, when to say it, and how is it actually going to help the situation. And I, I'd also like to add... Um, you can have a very intense disagreement, um, you know, the knockdown, drag out argument, um, but disrespect is a really uh, serious line. And one of the things I think that um, helped me was just um, recognizing that um, above all else, my husband is a man and he's a black man. And um, just kind of understanding especially in places that we've lived before, situations that have happened, that some of the things that I understood about his work, I understood about his day-to-day -day coming and going, was something that always helped to keep me in check in the sense that I never wanted to emasculate my husband in an argument because I understood that I might not always be able to take those things back and was the argument worth destroying something that um, made us work well together because of our own testimony and, and how we met and how we even agreed that we wanted to start our life together. So there were some very intentional things that um, kind of played into how we decided we even wanted to take that step. So I try to be careful because if I am in the same posture that the world is in with him, then sometimes you can't take those things back. And um, 
that's just important to me, and I'm sharing that here tonight. So I don't know if that speaks to somebody, but that, that's, that's real for me from that's my really heart. That's really good. So our next question, um, in being in ministry, have you been able to create a balance and or boundaries between platform ministry and just your practical life at home? We should let the pastors and preachers answer. Mighty God, okay. <laughs> As a senior pastor in the house, uh, <laughs> no. Um, no. No. So I, when you were asking that question, Amber, I reflect back on when we were pastoring our previous uh, assignment, I remember we were, I was out all day. I went to work, I went to the church, had Bible study, got home, it was about nine o'clock. And as soon as I got home, took a shower, my phone rang. And I literally put on some clothes and went back out of the right house, out the door. right? And I came back probably about one o'clock. There was a, a urgent situation, somebody had gotten killed. Um, and I had not seen my family all day. And my wife and children really didn't have an understanding because I didn't share as to what was happening in my ministry and in my life that day. Um, I have found it difficult to balance ministry, marriage, and family. Um, um, and especially uh, raising children. Now we have, you know, we have teenagers now, um, but I think about all the things that I've missed for my kids that my wife had had, has had to fill in the gap for. Um, and so if there's one thing about a, a ministry for me now and going forward is really trying to find that balance. Uh, what that looks like for the time I put in at the church, for the time I put in at my secular work, for the time I put in in the community, and then what I put in at home. Usually when I get home, I'm tired, right? And so I've said to myself in 2023 to, to be more conscious of that because I realize that that's, there's, isn't that a balance between my, my family life and ministry? Is that fair? <laughs> um, that is very fair. Um, it takes a lot of work and I will share that I have decided um, what needs to happen as far as our family and children are concerned. So it has looked different over the years. So in the early years, I didn't go to a lot of evening meetings because I had little kids and they needed to be in school. Um, as they've gotten older, they've been to more stuff, but my children do not miss weeks of school to go to church meetings um, because I am adamant that they deserve to have a childhood and they deserve to have experiences that support um, healthy child development to the best um, that we can do. We're not perfect, we don't meet the mark, but um, there does have to be sacrifice and I am okay um, standing in the gap, but it, it's hard and I have to pray a lot, but um, that is what my ministry is. So I will do all the things, but I am gonna make sure that my college student and my teenager get what they need, even when sometimes, like I wanna go lay down and I'm tired and I wanna rest too, but it is a commitment. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else well, have yeah, anything to add? We, we, we the, we the babies on the high. panel. Yeah, Go, go ahead. You, you, you've been at it longer. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, listening to the question, it made me a little nervous. Um, but the answer is no. Um, as, as hard as I would try, as hard as I would want to, um, I have not successfully created or developed a good balance. Um, it's funny, uh, 
Dr. Perkins said, come home tired. And Jasmine looked at me like, that's you. <laughs> um, because it, often, often, um, actually just, just last night, she, um, we were laying in bed and she looked at me and I said, you look tired. She said, you look tired and you act tired. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> what, what, was, that, was that a side comment? <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything to add there? It, it, it's, it, it is a challenging um, space to operate in um, because in reality, I mean, the, the reality of the situation is, is that we have said yes to our spouse and in the same fashion said yes to God. Yeah. And so while saying yes to your spouse, um, being mindful that saying yes to God could potentially mean that you have to tell your, tell your spouse, uh, I'll be home in an hour, but you don't get there and yeah. for Four hours. two and a half, three hours later. <laughs> right. Um, and, and understanding that you said, I'll be home in an hour, and that drive home two hours later is like, oh my goodness, how am I going to fix this? I said I was going to be home an hour ago, and this is the fourth time I've said I was going to be home an hour ago, but yet and still, um, the time has gotten away, and instead of being four, it's seven, and the children are in the bed, right? So we have a 12-year-old, an 8-year-old, a 7-year-old, and a 2-year-old. So they're in the bed at 7, 7.30. So often times, I'm getting text messages or phone calls saying, tell daddy goodnight, right? Um, and so that's hard because my children are waking up the next morning saying, daddy, how was your day? Or what did you do? Or how did this work? Or what does that look like? And so I'm now trying to fit time in on the drive to school in the morning, what I should be doing in the evening. And, and that is not a knock against the church. That's just the reality of it, yeah. right? Um, and so it, it is extremely difficult. Um, and I could be better. I'm going to be better um, as I continue. Now, understand, we live. It's on recording. <laughs> Baby, she going to play it back. Don't, don't watch yourself. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm good. Okay. okay, so... so so yes, the answer is no. Um, <laughs> but for but for me, I don't I've, I don't try to create a balance anymore. Um, I have decided that there is no such thing. Um, there there is no balance, right? So my strategy is to not come short in the same area every day. So, so there is no 50-50 between ministry and marriage. So when you, when you say that, what, what does that look like? like so quality? so that, means, that means in a seven, in, in seven days a week, I, I, would, I would much rather have, um, even if I have to come home late five out of those seven days, I need the two days that I'm home to be super impactful. Right? Um, and if I'm if I have a uh, what I refer to as a dry spell where things are slow and I'm spending more time at home, uh, and this is something that uh, my wife did help me notice. She she brought to my attention at one point that like you're home but you're not here, right? And so once that was brought to my attention, it's like okay, even if even if I'm physically home l less time, if I make that time more impactful then we can make this work. Now, the flip side to that is, as much as I, as I love ministry, I'm an introvert. So I don't even like being out. So, yeah, I, I don't. So in all fairness, a lot of the time that I spend away from home, my wife is like, you know you have to go to that event, right? And I'm like, but I don't. <laughs> She's like, y yeah, you need to go. We'll be fine. Right. So so when I am home, anybody who knows me personally knows, like, for example, I love to cook. Right. So when I'm home, even if nobody else is home, I'm cooking. So if I know I got a late evening, I think your, your fundraiser was Monday night. Um, I was able to leave the office early. I went home, cooked a full meal before they got home. 
and then went to the fundraiser. So like the impact is still there. So I'm not at this point trying to create a balance. Like it's not, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. I just need to make sure that I'm not, if, if, if sometimes I have to say no to ministry or I have to say no to, you know, extra things at work. If I do that enough, I can't provide. So we got to choose a lot of times. Now, this Amazon cart is out of control right now. So either I can be gone <laughs> and we can buy this Amazon cart or we, we can spend time and love on each other and, and it won't be here because, because ultimately as, <laughs> as a provider, I have to be a way to be able to provide, right? right so, right. so I think that th there's no real such thing as balance. And so I just try to be, I just try to be aware, and I try to watch body language. I watch um, fuses, right? Is the fuse short? If the fuse is short, okay, I'm gonna stay home because I'm, I'm gonna stay home tonight because I don't want I don't want to come home to a missing kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, so, so just watching those things and, and making it a priority, uh, even without, you know, request to be able to recognize like, man, th this last week or so has been nuts. You know, this next week, I'm gonna clear some stuff off. And so I don't, I don't, I mean, honestly, trying to create a balance is, that's, that's over with. I don't, I don't even go for that no more. So I just try to make that time more impactful. So one of the things that we make sure that we do is we have a family vacation every year. So that's that's one of the things that we schedule, and I know it's it's only seven or eight days out of 365, but it gives us an opportunity to just pause. It's usually the end of the year where we just go away, and it's just a, the family. We travel with some other families, uh, but we make sure that we have a family uh, time together. Uh, I appreciate you, what you just said, uh, Jordan, that you know you don't ever try to because it's not a balance, right? Um, and, and, and thinking about it, um, it's, I, I look at things as, and, and Carla and I oftentimes talk about this, is it's just seasonal, right? It might just be a season where I'm traveling a lot. I'm in that season right now, right? I might be on a plane once a week or once every two weeks, right? It's just a season. It's not gonna last for a long time. It's not gonna last forever. It will come to an end. Um, and if we can balance those seasons um, and make sure that on the other end we spend some time together. Uh, I think that's helpful. Yes. Yes. Um, a couple of things. Being home but not being home. Being home but not being there. I've heard that. Um, and, and when you said that, I immediately thought about, um, okay, you're home, but when you're home, your phone is ringing off the hook or you're on the phone for 45 minutes or with one call and then an hour with the next call. Um, and so you're at home, but you're not really present. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is the vacations. Um, I think it's important to vacation and try to create space, try to create time, right? So um, actually going Monday, leaving Monday for a church conference, well, when I was in the planning phase of the church conference, I said, I'm gonna invite Jasmine. So now the church conference is work, but it's also going to be a vacation date type because we're leaving the children at home. Praise the Lord, <laughs> amen. Um, <laughs> but I think that it's just important to create that space and create that time. Um, to have one-on-one, -on -one, um, just to sit down and talk for a few minutes, right? And, and so that's the one thing that I think that's really important um, is making sure that you try to create that time even when I'm gone or on the phone or whatever it may be. That's, that's now, I, will, I will say this though, we, we, we make it a point to also, we, we've, we've learned over the last few years to prioritize dating. Um, and so now we've gotten to the place where we, we are intentional about having at least one date night a month. Um, I think Jordan is making us look bad, right? No, Extremely. no listen, listen. We had, to, we had to do this because... We got to get a whole life listen, together. Listen. And, and, and a matter of... Just being very Cooking transparent. Cooking full meals. Cooking no, full listen, meals. Listen, 
But I, going I on dates. Anyway. I'm Look a, at Lakeer. I, li- I like my food better than I like most food, so I'm going to do that anyway. <laughs> but but th- th- this, started, this started in a very crucial time of our marriage, right? Like it was like either this or it's either date night or divorce, right? Like this was... This was how that started, right? So let's not, let's not romanticize it. It's romantic now, but that's how that started, okay? But, but, but anytime, like, like my mom's in the audience now, and so like she might randomly be like, hey, uh, what the kids got going on on Friday, bring them to the house. And so even if I had work stuff planned, whatever the case may be, if she sends that text, I'm clearing everything else out because now it's date night, right? So like, we prioritize that because because we know there's no balance Mm -hmm. right so like anytime we have an opportunity or anytime i have an opportunity to to create that space like you know we have our for most probably 75 percent of our date nights are at the same place we go (laughs) it's our spot we go to our little spot whatever i think the last time we both we we went back home and she was on one couch i was on the other we just knocked out right that was date night but but that was one of the things that that really helped us so in those seasons you're talking about when it really is chaotic i try to find like at least one friday night to stop the chaos uh, or i don't even care if it's a tuesday night but if if it can stop the chaos for a moment or so i'll have dinner and you know chill out a little bit we try to take advantage of those now in those moments how do you prevent yourselves from having conversations about bills kids and all of the things like how do you make it just about the two of you so Initially, I don't. I'm guilty of that. And he has to say, them kids are not with us. Forget them kids. He was like, forget them kids. Stop talking about the kids. <laughs> so, so, like, he actually has to say it to I, me I, because if talking, not... It's the last one. It's the last one. <laughs> if not, so we, we keep each other grind. I, he don't ever talk about the kids on a date night, but it's always me. And, and then it can lead... <laughs> If we're having like a conversation about goals, because we actually do that, sometimes we out, we talk about bills and stuff. But for me, um, it's more of the kids. So he has to actually stop me. And then I, once I recognize it, I'm fine. All right, so we're gonna take a step back. When did you realize that you were ready for marriage? And you realized that your spouse was who you wanted to marry? Yeah. Okay, Are you, do you, okay, I can go first. Um, when did I realize I was ready for marriage? When I was a little girl. Um, I knew I was going to be married. So that's a true story about I knew I was going to be married. I knew I was going to have a little girl. Um, but when did I know that he was the one I was going to marry? The very first day I met him. And I know that sometimes seems like when people say that you're like well yeah but the very first day that i met him i knew and um he didn't know too much later he actually <laughs> she had to bring you up to speed. <laughs> 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 listen, listen. he didn't know too much later and i actually am the first person that said i love him and he did not say it back listen let me tell you something <laughs> she, <laughs> she started talking about god told me i was like he, he ain't told me i didn't get that text <laughs> i didn't he, he ain't told me nothing. He, I don't know what God you praying to, but, but mine ain't said nothing of the sort. So, yeah. Um, but since I done borrowed Dr. Perkins' microphone. Um, so, so for me, it, it was later. Um, and for me, it was a couple of things. I really never, never really had a desire to be married. Um, and so... Real quick, can you, can you explain just a little bit? Because these are, these are the type of things that people deal with like do you have the desire to be married yeah so so I did not um I was very open (laughs) about that when we met um I I did not this is Bethel this ain't abundant faith so I gotta make sure I did not think that (laughs) I did not think that there was one woman on this planet that could encompass everything I needed Mm. okay okay so we'll leave it there all right Okay, we'll leave, we'll leave it there. Um, so, so, so there were some things on my list, so to speak, and I, I didn't think that there was a woman that could check off all of those boxes. I didn't think she existed, right? Um, then, 
then when I met her and after we started dating, I started to realize that like some of the things that were on my list weren't really my items, like they were society's items. Right, so I just told y'all, right, like I actually love to cook, right? Like I, I love to cook. And so, so you gotta get you a wife that cook. Well, I love to cook, so I really don't need, I, I really don't need that, so I can take that off, right? So it sounded like you were just matured and became more reasonable yeah, yeah. with your expectations. Yeah, so, so that started to become a real, and so listen, then, I'm helping y'all tonight. Yeah, so, so there, was one, there was one defining moment that I was like, okay, yeah, this is, this, is, this is it. So obviously, like, that process happened. But then there was a moment, I lost my job. We, we were still dating. I lost my job. Um, uh, and I was, I was at her apartment, and I was like, listen, they don't let me go. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's looking rough out here. Like, so she looked at me and was like, so what are we going to do? What's the plan? What are we going to do? What, we, what, we, what do we need to do? And so when she said we, like immediately, I know I was like, okay, this is it. Because I was expecting her to be like, well, you know, when you get your life together, you know, let me, <laughs> let me yeah. know. Uh, right. Let me know how that work out for you. Right. You know what right. I mean? But right. she was just like, okay, so what, we, what do we need to do? Right. And so once that happened, that's when it, that's when it clicked. And so um, after that, I was like, yeah, that's, that's it realized she was for you and a little backstory i'm older than him and so i was more established <laughs> uh, i was more established when we met um but i knew exactly i had been in relationships so i knew exactly what i wanted i had already ta I literally talked to god about what i wanted and so when we met and we're talking and stuff i'm like yep that's who i'm gonna marry why does he have to be younger than me? Why? <laughs> but, yep, I just knew. Um, so I was more mature, and I know that life happens. So him losing his job at such a young age, I'm just like, okay, this is not the end for him. So. Go ahead. Um, so... <laughs> so... Re refresh my memory. I, I, I can hear. I can hear the filters coming in. You can hear the filters. So 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 refresh my memory. The when, when did you know that when Jasmine, did I know was Jasmine was the one? one yeah. And when was I ready to get married? Exactly. It's right there. It's right there. Oh, okay. I see. It. <laughs> they they got you. We got you. I, I, pr Shout I appreciate out to the it. Thank you. Squad. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I knew that she was the one before I was ready to get married. If that makes sense. Go ahead and break that down a little bit. Um, a so, little bit, Pastor. Just a little bit. Break that down. Not a lot. <laughs> so, um, I knew that she was the one because I didn't want anyone else. She had everything that I knew would be the wife for me, but I just wasn't ready to get married when she was. Um, to add to that, I was dealing with ministry. Now, we, we married. We, we married now. Um, we weren't married then, and we lived together. So we lived together before we got married. Um, and one of the decisions we made as a couple was that if we were going to do it the right way, um, I needed to move out. <laughs> um, and so, so. We got married January the 1st. Um, um, I preached my initial sermon November the 14th. So while I was thinking about getting married, I was also thinking about marriage, I mean ministry. And so I felt, we felt that in order for me to operate effectively in ministry, um, I needed to move out and when I moved out, um, what I'm going to tell you that she probably won't is that when I moved out, she said, either we're going to get married or it's over. And I said, oh, wait a minute. I, I know that uh, <laughs> I know that she's the one for me. Um, however, I'm not ready for the dun -da dun 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 But it just got real, real fast. Um, and so... Um, after moving out and kind of evaluating my life, um, I was like, you know what? 
it's, it's time to get married. So tell us a real version, <laughs> Jasmine. <laughs> so again, you put we, him out. We started. <laughs> we I dated him very young. I was eighteen. We were together for four and a half years before we got married. So I'm saying it's time to get married. He was not ready to get married. We're married now. Been married for almost twenty years. It's it's okay. But he was not ready for the first couple years of marriage. He was still not ready. So. He, he still, I mean, he wasn't. That was a ultimatum that we should not do, you know, and I know that now. But I was young, and so I'm like, you either gonna marry me or you can go about your business. And so he did, and we are still together now, but he was not ready at the beginning, and it took him some years to finally get there, but he is there. Amen. Amen. Oh, hold on. She, she didn't tell you, she, she didn't say when she was ready to marry me. As soon as I met you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. So, um, uh, so I met Carla as, as she shared at my uh, one of my best friend's house. Uh, she was they grew up together. They were neighbors, um, and we met the summer after my first year in graduate school. And I'd been in a relationship for three and a half years. Um, so I, I was on the rebound real life and uh, I was living in Washington DC um, and worked up in New Jersey New York area for the summer so it was just a summer thing we met for the summer we had a great summer uh, hanging out in the park and, and enjoying New York City and then it was August and I was going back to Maryland <laughs> And she's like, what are we going to No, not, it's not your turn yet, hon. <laughs> and she's like, what are we going to do? And I was like, I'm going back to school. And so, we, yeah. And then we, I went back to school. And we decided that we would date long distance. So after we met for the summer, we dated uh, long distance for my my second year in graduate school. She had already finished graduate school, so she was working. Um, and towards the end of the year, she came down to visit me uh, at the university. Um, and I was writing my, my thesis. And I was writing uh, my comprehensive exam. Um, there were five questions, 20 pages each, and I had 72 hours to write. Um, by the end of the second day, uh, I had been in the same spot <laughs> for three days. I had not done anything. Um, I, I was writing. I was writing. Um, and she came, and she came and visited me. And I said, "Hun, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I don't care if I pass or fail. Um, and she sat and edited my, my last question. That's love. And... <laughs> That's, 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 that, that's her master's? She no, wrote, it's not. No, she, wrote the, she wrote the thesis? No, she did. She just edited the last question. <laughs> <laughs> and at that moment, in my, I was living in a frat house, uh, in an apartment in a frat house, uh, a two-room apartment with a bathroom. Um, I knew that this was a person uh, that God had sent for me. Now, I was 24 years old. No. I was 22. I was 22 years old. Um, and then, I think this, shortly after that, I met her parents. I met mom and dad. And then once I met dad, I knew this was the woman that God sent for me. Because if you've ever met my wife's father, he's just an older version of me. Mm. Uh, Dad and I are, are kin, kin from day one. I, I don't understand folks who say they don't get along with in-laws uh, because a part of the blessing for us in our marriage is just, um, and my mom has raised her as a daughter for the last 22 years. And so at that moment, I knew that she was the person for me. Did I clean it up well? No, yeah. she has something else to say. So I, I'm just going to quickly add, so yes, I am also older, so I was finished school and I was working, um, but two things happened. Uh, we dated long distance, which is definitely a challenge and can be a risk, um, but 
when I started feeling like it was, you know, wanting to visit, kind of wanting to be around more, um, like we had the conversation. So it wasn't like a surprise one day he shows up with this ring, like it happens on TV. We started to talk about what kind of life we want to have. And similar to um, the Rileys, I will say that part of that conversation was about how are we going to live this life and what are some things that we decided we wanted to do differently than some of the things that we had seen. And um, while we had a road to go, I think that understanding that foundation and really kind of understanding what we wanted our walk to be and our walk was not perfect. The walk wasn't perfect, understand me. But we decided what we wanted our walk to be and we partnered with God to help us get there why we can still sit here today because those arguments and the things we talked about at the beginning, the topics change, but sometimes they're the things that have always been there. So you, you want to understand that how you start is not how you finish, mm. but how you start may impact what some of the journey's going to be and some of the battles you keep coming up against. But you, you know, you pray, you have love, and, and you keep moving because it's a commitment. All right. So the hour is far spent. And I let you off the hook very easily. I think we need a panel part two. We'll see if we can get that together for on schedule, maybe in the next couple months. We definitely need a panel part two. But in ending, there's two questions I want to hit real quick. What is or what has been the biggest disappointment and the biggest uh, or the most joyous occasion in your marriages? So keep in mind, we only got like nine minutes, pastors. Hit them quick. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go first. Okay. The biggest the biggest disappointment was that none of the cliches we heard about marriage was true. Mm. So like even the whole like you know you newlywed oh y'all in the honeymoon phase mm -mm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, yeah, them first few years was was t like I feel like I feel like we didn't start honeymoon till probably about year seven. So. I mean, I feel like that's where we are now, right? But like, I was expecting in the beginning, like I, I was like, well, maybe I ain't even hear God right, because I, this is hard. This is not. This I don't know what this is. Uh, uh, so that was the that was the that was the biggest disappointment initially, right? But now I understand that that is also the biggest joy because if the honeymoon phase is only in the beginning, that's a very short window. Mm. Right, so if you go through, if you go through your roughest stuff early, then you have the rest of your marriage for the, for the honeymoon phase. And so, like we've adopted, a bunch of heard this before. We've adopted uh, sort of a moniker for our marriage. Like when things happen, even between her and I, it's like we've been through worse. So that's that's like our motto. Like anytime something happens, it's like we've been through worse. So let's just figure this out and keep it pushing. So for for me. The biggest disappointment and the biggest joy is kind of, you know, different sides of the same coin. All right. Anybody can jump in, ladies? I really, I, this one kind of stumped me right now. Um, I, I don't know what the biggest disappointment is because no marriage is perfect. So we had all this information um, given to us and just come to the conclusion that whatever works for our marriage is for our marriage and to block out the noise. Um, so I don't, I don't know if I've been disappointed with him. I, I really don't know, um, but. Not necessarily with him, just with marriage as marriage. a whole. Yeah, just the idea or thought, like, like he was talking about the cliches, like, ah, we didn't really have a honeymoon period. We're in that, you know, different yeah. things of that nature. Um, and the second part was the, the biggest, biggest joy. joy. Um, the biggest joy to me has been in our different stages, still loving each other, 
through our, our different stages. And of course, like our children, like going through that. Um, but actually going to our, we just had a 10 year renewal and actually like still being in love with him and excited about that, that day and that time and about life. Um, so that has been the biggest joy, but I'm still stumped on this disappointment thing. So I'll go ahead and pass it to another <laughs> couple. So, so y'all have been real nice and real, uh, Maybe because we're in the church. Maybe we should have had this conversation out in the pub. I don't know. I just knew there was going to be a part two of the Right. Um, uh, so the biggest joy for me in our marriage is just uh, the ministry that has been birthed through our marriage. Uh, not only the ministry with our children and our family, but also the ministry uh, that God has birthed through us that we have seen an impact in lives and community. Um, and, and feeling like we are in synergy at this stage in our ministry. Um, um, my wife didn't answer her call to the ordained ministry until much later. I never pressed it. I never pushed it. Uh, she got to that place with her and God, and I really appreciated that. Um, uh, I'll be honest, with, with kids and work and everything else, uh, we got to schedule some intimacy. Amen. Well, we're not trying to be fruitful to multiply. <laughs> Get kids to multiply. Just be fruitful. Uh, just, just be fruitful. I know we have we have some some children in the room, um, but but I think I think we have become more conscious of the fact that you know if we allow days to turn weeks to turn months. Um, that we can easily fall into that, right? Because we are doing a million and one things um, and really scheduling that time and, 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 and not necessarily always scheduling time, but making the time, right? Just make the time to like, and it ain't gotta be like, you know, eight o'clock on a Saturday. It could be, you know, six o'clock before you go to work, amen. Mm. Amen. amen. Let's, let's play hooky from work for a couple of hours. Reverend DJ in the office, let me go home and <laughs> be happy and come back and worship. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> My wife is having a fit right now. Uh, but, but it's a part of the reality. It's a part of what keeps your marriage together. Oh, like, yeah. We don't oftentimes talk about that, but it's an important part of the marriage. So I will just add that um, the greatest joy is like knowing that the love that was present on the day of our wedding has far outgrown that day. And that's what I tell couples, right? If the marriage, if the wedding day is the most love that you have for each other, something is wrong because it should grow over time, even through the hard times. Um, in, in appreciation for who uh, my husband is outside of all the trappings, right? So people see pastor, they see principal, they see associate director, they see all the things. And I see Carlos for who he is um, in all of the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. The disappointment honestly has been that adulting is harder than I thought it would Facts. ever be. Facts. And, and, and Facts. Just, just having to weather um, the things that we cannot control. So where this economy is, all the things that for those of us who are certain generations that went to school, we did everything we were told to do. And now we're faced with um, raising a generation that has to be even more ingenious than our parents and grandparents thought they were raising us for. And so that um, is the challenge that we're up to, but I can honestly say that quietly sometimes that part is a little disappointing because I just couldn't have imagined that it would be this. So that's what I have to share. So I believe our biggest joy is kind of similar, um, just being able to see that the growth, because yes, our first three years of marriage were horrible. And so being able to get through those horrible times and now 
you know, just having some real joy in the marriage and actually seeing each other for who we are um, is my biggest joy. And our four children, we didn't, we tried to have kids for seven years of our marriage before, and then God didn't stop giving them to me after that. And so <laughs> they were a joy, uh, more abundance than I, than I needed, but you know, that's another story. Um, and then a, um, what is the other one? Biggest disappointment. Dis disappointment. Um, Do you have one? Maybe I'm, I'm with you on the intimacy. Um, I'm the man in the relationship on that, so I'll just leave it at that. Amen. My, my, my right. wife has said she was the man. I don't know. <laughs> 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 I, I don't I don't know I, 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 I don't know what that how, how that really fits uh, I thought I was married to a woman um, she said that the first three years were horrible I'm, I'm just like tell us how you really feel <laughs> Jesus it was a bit of a transition. oh my god now I, I mean it was rough it was rough there were there was some rocky terrain I will admit that um, I honestly was sitting here just listening to everyone else just being happy to just sit and listen because I was stumped. Um, I, I mean, the adulting is, is real. Um, um, I mean, and I don't want to scare anybody, but marriage is real, right? Like when I, when I think about adulting, I, I, my mind immediately went to being married, right? I mean, I love my wife with everything in me, but being married is work. It's, yep. it, it's not for, you don't do this just because, right? Like it's, it's not the, the cliche, the, 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 the house with the white picket fence, the dogs and the children, right? Like all of those things, that's not, to me, that's, you can uh, get those things, mm -hmm. but that's not what marriage is, right? To me. And so, um, yeah, I, I disagree with all of you. Uh, in addition to the horrible and being the man, Lord Jesus. <laughs> But, but it's also recognizing, um, and, and as I think through our marriage over the last, we, we've been married now for 21 years, we've been together for 22, 23 years, um, that the things that we accomplished, we accomplished them together, mm -hmm. right? There were times when I felt like, okay, this is it, this is all we're going to do, and Carlo come and said, no, we have more in us. And it happened in the reverse. Like, Hannah, are you going to settle for that? There's more in you. We can do this. Um, and so I think about, you know, raising our kids, um, living in three different countries and, you know, living in five different cities and, uh, you know, pastoring and serving the community, that we were able to do that together in, ministry, in marriage. And I, and I agree with you. It is hard, but it's worth it. It's hard, it, it takes a lot of time, it takes all your energy. Um, we didn't share earlier, you, you might have uh, been able to gather, both of us are counselors, so imagine what an argument is in our house. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm hearing you say is this. <laughs> I don't, I'm, and, and my response is, I'm not one of your clients. <laughs> Her response is, who are you talking to? This is not one of your members of your church, right? Well, you remember the church. Yes, you are. So, so, but it, it, it's work. It's work, and it requires both persons uh, to be committed to it. Um, but I would not trade it for anything. When you were saying that, I just thought about something. What is disappointing is the way we're millennials. We're talking about millennials. And, in marriage and ministry, the way that millennials view marriage. There's a big nagging topic about wives submitting. Mm. And so <laughs> we could talk about that on the panel for the whole hour. So it's, that is disappointing the way that marriage is viewed and, and the way that you get, you have to be careful who you talk to, because they're like, oh, I knew it. He expects you to be with a scarf on pregnant and sweeping the floor and, and all that stuff. So that is very, I know. <laughs> yeah. So that is very disappointing that in ministry that you really um, 
have limited people who you can actually even talk to about your marriage. All right. Well, ooh, ooh, that I'm sorry, but that scratched something out. I, I, um, and that we're who, in overtime, people. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, that that but who, we can keep going. Keep that going. that who you talk to um, is so so major. That's why I value uh, my friendship and brotherhood with these men on the stage because um, I heard it said before I was I dove into ministry. Um, that ministry was one of the loneliest professions you could be in. Um, and so, because everyone has an idea of what a minister or ministry should look like or what it is. Um, and so, I give, if I had flowers for all of the wives, I would give them to, I wish I would have stopped to get some flowers. Because I can't think of being who it's harder being married to than a pastor yeah. i'm just just because um you have to deal with which my wife tells me sometimes um and i'll probably hear about this later but um she has said to me um you were called not me mm-hmm. or that's your call not mine mm-hmm. um um and, and but she is an awesome ministry partner, um, but it it gets hard sometimes, right? Um, and so she has to share me not only with Emmanuel, but whatever other church I'm on assignment at, whatever else I'm doing. Um, and so um, you know you have to be careful. Um, and communication is key, but you can't tell everybody. You really can't. T- oh my goodness! You can't tell it. You can get, talk to your spouse. In, in you saying that, I think also um, having an increased discernment of who you talk to and what you share, because you have to be careful of who you talk to and what you share, because some people are wanting to get close because of what they see right here, not necessarily wanting to get to know that person. You want the glitz and the glam and everything that is um, publicized about ministry and not really getting to know that person. So one of the things that I struggled with early, um, and and Carla and I oftentimes talk about this, is couple friends, right? That when we started in ministry, I found it difficult to to be in couple friendships, right? Right. Um, because I'm such a loyal friend, if someone were to go down, I'm going to have to pick sides, right? <laughs> so, but one of the blessings for our marriage is to be in relationship with couple friends, right? And so I remember uh, when our kids were real young and we were living in D.C., uh, we had these two other couples that we would hang out with. And what it did for us, whenever we, and we would do like, Kitty stuff. Like, we'll have sleepovers, we'll go to dinner, all that stuff. It was just three couples. Um, but we would have to f- fix our stuff before we go to the couple get together. We're like, we good? We good. We didn't do that? <laughs> she said no. Uh, but, but it forced us to, to bring to the table any issues that we might have, right? And as a couple, we were able to work it through. And so as I think about marriage now, my, my advice to, to, to individuals that think they want to walk this road, believe that God has called them to walk this road, is to find a couple friends that you can trust. Um, uh, what, what the wives don't know is the, 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 the pastors have been on the text message all week long, like, I don't know what my wife going to say. <laughs> Right, but we've been we've been talking through this amongst ourselves, um, and that helps us, right? Because as Riley said, this road called ministry is a very lonely road, right? And the wives get to see us in our most vulnerable state when we don't pour it out. I got home last night. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give an insight. So I, I've been sick since uh, a Sunday, Sunday night, uh, Monday morning. And so last night I was curled up in bed. And I was like, huh, can you just put some Vicks on my back? <laughs> and she's like, we're going to talk about this tomorrow. Because I get really baby when I'm sick. Like, I, I get real. Call my mama, get soup. Curled up in the... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, that, I'm that when I'm sick. Um, 
Uh, uh, but they get to see us in this vulnerable state and then get to see us to be super persons when we're going out in the world and doing ministry. So, Since, since we're on this, so when Pastor Riley was talking about this being lonely, I, I, I would, this is for all the watchers, right? Viewers, whatever, everybody here. The reason why it's lonely is because whether you want to believe it or not, you view your pastor in a certain way. So if pastors were, now, Abundant Faith, y'all know Pastor Jay get up on the pulpit and tell everything. However, I tell it after it's over and dealt with. I've, I've never told y'all anything while we were dealing with that thing. Because you all view your pastor in a certain way. So although you say, see, I want a pastor who's real and who don't try to act like everything's perfect all the time. Until that pastor is real and is telling you things are not perfect. And then you're like, you always got something going on. I, I'm going to find me another church. Yeah. Right? And so, so then it becomes, and, and actually, because I'm an, I'm an introvert, like, like my best friend to this day is the same best friend I had since kindergarten. So, like, I don't, I'm okay with not having a lot of people around. But I remember one time my wife and I were in a disagreement and she was like, I don't even have anybody to talk to because who do I go and tell them the pastor to? <laughs> who, who, do, who, 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 <laughs> who can I go to and tell them some stuff about you tripping, right? And so just, just, being, just being real, I don't even know if I, I may have told you this, I don't know. But one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why um, in terms of ministry, why I submitted to Pastor Perkins was because I knew that uh, Dr. Perkins is, would be safe spaces for both of us, right? So, so there was a heated moment um, that my wife and I were going through, and I was actually up at Pastor Perkins' job, and he's like, hold on, wait, man. He sends a couple of text messages, just shut the door. He's like, I had to clear my calendar. Let's talk about this real quick. So we have this conversation, and then, of course, Dr. Carla's like, you know, she's the therapist and all of this. So he's like, call Carla. So I call Dr. Carla, and I'm telling her what's going on. And she's like, I mean, I can set you an appointment, but tell your wife to call me. And I don't even know if they ever spoke. I really don't. I don't know if they ever spoke about that in particular. But I, one of the reasons why I knew that this was, you know, who I was supposed to submit to in ministry is because they would be a safe space for both my wife and I. So if it ever came down to it, I knew that we could get a phone call and, and say, y'all come in here for dinner tonight, we're gonna help y'all through this. And I knew that my wife would be receptive to them. So when we talk about like that lonely road, this is not a woe is me thing, right? <laughs> like this is, not, this is not what that is, but understanding that like, there's some things, just like as a husband, there's some things that I just don't dump on my wife, right? It's not about keeping secrets. It's not about anything like that. But there's certain things as, as the head of the household, as a protective provider that I just don't put on my wife. There's certain things that the pastor is not going to put on the congregation. He's not going to put on the, on the leadership. He's not going to put. So then who does the pastor and first lady go to? And so that's why um, it can be lonely. So I just wanted to give you all that context because when y'all make these calls, and you want pastor to come and see about your second step cousin on your play uncle side, understand you're not the only person making that call, right? And so, so when the frustration happens in the household, the pastor and the first lady have to have a space where they can deal with their stuff too. And, and um, just on that, um, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, because that was, and this is kind of getting off a little bit, but that was one of my, um, before somebody left, I'm not going to say who left, um, but, but somebody left. And so um, our, our Wednesday meetings got interrupted because um, somebody decided they wanted to um, change and, 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 and adventure out. And I'm not going to say anybody's name, but you know. Um, <laughs> Um, we, we, we had a standing Wednesday meeting um, uh, in, in uh, Dr. Perkins' office, um, but that, that's no longer available to us. <laughs> um, but that was the time that we would kind of 
unload on each other, right? Um, we would, I say unload, unpack. I guess we would unload as well. We would share, we would um, get encouragement. Um, and that's when I realized, one of those Wednesdays, I realized um, really how solid uh, Jordan was because I happened to be in the office and uh, we had been just newly introduced and he was just like, man, listen, this is what's going on. And I was like, oh, okay, well, okay. And I, I was honored to be in the space, right? But I knew that he was real. And I was like, this is a, a brother I can, I can partner with, that I can support and, and that he will support me as well, right? Um, we're going to try to figure out uh, another space, Jordan, to get our, uh, get our Wednesdays together. Cause so now the conversation is like, hey, have you talked to, you talked to Dr. Perkins? Yeah, right. have, you, have you talked to Dr. Perkins? You talked to him? Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Help the brother out. Come on, Carlos. <laughs> all right. Um, as, we, as we wrap up, what would be uh, your final advice to those looking to jump into marriage? Don't jump in. That's the don't, don't, don't jump, don't jump. This is this is not swimming. <laughs> this is not don't don't jump. And the reason why I say that is because, is because marriage is is very serious. So one of the things that I I will say, is that before we actually got married, we agreed on certain things, and one of those things was divorce isn't an option. So whatever we got to work through, you know, we just going to be unhappily married until we figure it out because divorce isn't an option. So that was something that we, and, and don't get me wrong, that's a lot easier said than done, right? But don't just jump in because I'm in love today. Because truth be told, love ain't enough to keep you married. Love is enough to get you married. It's not enough to keep you married, you know? You understand? So, um, so I would just encourage people to be prayerful, right? And, and understand that uh, whoever your spouse is um, or, or might be, if you're not married yet, allow God to reveal certain things to you and confirm certain things to you before you make a decision like that. Because before God even established the church, he established a marriage. So it's important. So before you make that type of decision let's go do some prayer some premarital counseling some all of that before you make that decision mine is simple put god first and everything else at the rest that's it and i would just say communication 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 if you communicate what you need um, before you get into marriage, there's no real surprises. Of course, there's always going to be things that you have to adjust to, but you need to communicate everything before you get married because a lot of times people are jumping in and then they're like, I had no, like, I don't even know who I married, right? Because you did not communicate properly. So just communicating about any and everything before you get into marriage, then there's really no big surprises that you have to deal with later on. Anyone else? And I would say um, yes to all of the above in terms of communication, premarital counseling, um, seeking the Lord about your decision. And last thing I would say is um, be yourself. Do not show up to a marriage as your representative mm. because what is going to happen is when it gets tough the representative is not the person that's going to hang in there and work on the marriage because it is going to get tough so definitely do not be afraid to show that person who is the one who you really are because that's who needs to be in the marriage. The two people who are the people and not their representatives. So definitely be who you are because there is somebody out there for everyone and um, somebody is gonna love you despite whatever you think might be unlovable inside of you. Because all of us are examples that love does exist but it takes work. 
Yeah. That's the rally. Go ahead, man. Jump on in there. No, I was, I was just saying that, man. Just, <laughs> I was agreeing. That's all. All right. So as we wrap up, I would love to have a part two of this panel if we could get all the participants to agree maybe in the next couple months and we can talk about the intimacy, we can talk about some other things that we did not get to tonight because I did not want to jump directly into that. I wanted to uh, show uh, the people what marriage looks like at the beginning and before you jump in, you got to make an informed decision. You have to understand who you're marrying and what marriage is about. It's a covenant. And it's a lifelong covenant. That's why God designed it to be. So I pray that you guys uh, received a lot of insight. I thank the panel for their honesty and their transparency because it's not easy. And hey, Carla, I want to thank you and Amber for hosting us tonight. Come on, celebrate God for them. Come on, celebrate God for the couple of Abundant Faith Christian Church. Bartlett, thank God for Emmanuel. Amen. And for First Lady, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, we, we would like to continue this discussion uh, at, a, at a future date, uh, Carlos and Amber, uh, because I believe that uh, somebody, I was looking at the Facebook page, uh, page and there are a number of folks that were joining us from all over the world uh, I want to recognize uh, my family that was on from Maryland and from New York as well as my folks from the US Virgin Islands thank you all for joining us and being a part of this conversation um, marriage is work ministry is work and as we grow as we learn together uh, we believe can we only can do it through God uh, Pastor Jordan well, pray for us as we close out um, and we'll close up Bible study. Uh, we have some other things planned for, for us for the remainder of the year. Uh, we always trying to figure out ways in which we can collaborate um, and, and do ministry together. And so this is just one of the ways that we, uh, we want to do that. Brother, won't you pray for us? Father God, we thank you uh, once again for this time together. God, we thank you that even in this discussion of marriage, uh, we thank you for the marriage between Christ and his church. Uh, we thank you for allowing us to be in relationship with you. Uh, with that said, God, we ask that you would keep us all covered and that you would help us uh, to love as you have shown us to love. God, we pray right now that you would continue to keep us safe. We ask that you would continue uh, to keep us covered, allow your spirit to lead, guide, and protect us. God, we ask that you dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you alive. Uh, couples, let's take a picture here. Uh, Reverend, need you to do me a favor. The lights outside didn't come on. Uh, we need to just go.